Thank you. I'm very happy to give this uh, talk on a title which is RRR, which is provocatively titled so that at least some more people will come thinking it is a blockbuster. But I have to apologize. I even made this R look like what they have put in the movie itself. <laughs> <laughs> to make it look like that. But that is what... Is it? <laughs> okay, I don't. I I don't. I didn't know the internal jokes. Okay, let us move on. Okay. So the reason I get, chose to give this talk yesterday at Math Science and today here was yesterday was actually uh, death anniversary of uh, Ramanujan. On 26 April 1920, he died. And uh, usually people remember the extraordinary people's uh, birth and death anniversary and do talk about it, particularly reminding themselves of the contributions they made. Now, I'm going to talk about certain things which is connected both with physics and mathematics. And the mathematics is so simple. Um, and provocative also, more than the title. And you will find that soon. So um, this is about uh, Ramanujan, a page. Uh, he was born on December 22nd, uh, 1887, and died at the age of 32 on 26th April 1920. Within this short time, he achieved an unparalleled, I don't think anyone else in India have reached a level in any sciences, okay, in any sciences compared to this thing, that level of uh, status within a very short time and definitely without a great training in higher mathematics. He didn't have much of a training in higher mathematics and uh, he did uh, the there is this book called The Man Who Knew Infinity, written by Robert Cunningham. Very interesting, he came to Mad Science also to give a talk about this. It's a very brilliant book. I have never seen a biography uh, which is written so well. My, uh, I do read several biographies, and this is what is the thing. And uh, he lived in a small traditional home in a place called Kumbakonam. Have you, have you, are you people aware of this town called Kumbakonam in any way? Okay. Kumbakonam in Tanjur district, close to Tanjur. If you are know Tanjur, which is close to Trichy, it's about 25 kilometers from there. It's a small temple town. So many temples are there. And in that place, there is a famous temple called Sarangabani Temple. And there is a street in front of it which is called Sarangabani East Sanidhi Street. In fact, the temple Sarangabani, the Vishnu, takes his uh, procession through that street. That's why it is called this East Sanidhi Street in the town of Kumbakonam. The family home is now is, is a museum. It has become a museum, small house. It has been taken over by Shastra University. And they have a museum with his pictures and various few, few things from the thing. And our Professor Srinivas Rao was involved in the museum itself. And uh, this is about Ramanujan. And I will tell something more personal in the next page. But understanding infinity is very crucial in physics. Wherever you do any calculation, you come across infinity or zero, it's like giving get zero mark or infinite mark, full mark. So, and particularly in quantum physics, at the recent trend, and I'm going to explain what he did has some connection to physics. That's why I have. This is an attempt to post Ramanujan in the context of some modern trends in quantum field theory. That is what I think. But don't be bothered about these terms, and I'm going to do is very simple mathematics not more than what is there in school or high school level. That is what I would prefer it goes to the primary school level, but there is only one slide which is at the primary school level, okay, in this thing. Okay, 
So this is that home where he lived. And now it is a museum. And uh, this is the place where he lived, which is uh, Sarangabani, Sanadi Street, Kumbakonam, etc. Why is it I am projecting this thing? Is because I have a personal association, personally. And uh, I lived in the same street. It was very close to our place. And people used to say, this is where Ramanujan used to live. <laughs> that is the thing. And it was actually posing as an inspiration for many of the young people there in that place. And uh, that is one of the associations. The second association is, he went to a school called Town High School. Okay? Kumbakonam Town High School is well known. And he went to that school. And uh, fortunately, I also went to the same school. 70 years later than what he did. That is the second association with that part. And uh, in uh, t 10 years back, 2012, there was a celebration in that school for uh, 125th year of uh, Ramanujan's. And they actually, the school always remembered him, even before he became famous. In the last 20, 30, 40 years, he became famous in some sense. People before that, outside, were not aware of it. Outside the mathematics circle, they were not aware of Ramanujan. And uh, now in the last 20 years, after, thing, after the movie <laughs> came, people became aware of it, and that is the thing. And uh, 2012, there was a celebration in the school to honor the greatest man who went through that school. And they thought that uh, I'm worthy of it to come for that thing as an old boy, old alumni of that school. So they asked me to come. And this is where I went and talked. And uh, you can see Srinivas also at the back. OK? And your friend is also there, both of them. These two are. And the rest of them are connected with the school. And this is where I talk to the students. Okay? Not only I talk to the students, which is a larger, some 300 students were there sitting in the thing. But I was also asked to talk to the highest class, that is 11th standard or 12th standard students. I did speak to them about mathematics. But this is about generally motivating them to go to higher sciences, including mathematics. This is what my talk here. And that all these Tamil words are essentially saying town high school Kumbakonam. And uh, in fact, there is a statue of uh, Ramanujan also at the back. But the photograph is not capturing that. OK. So the way to understand his contribution is to look at the, first of all, if you say somebody is great, OK, like one can talk about what is the work which they have done. But for common people, for anyone, you will say, how many works have his name? Like, for example, Newton, Newton's equation, Newton's optics, Newton's law of gravity. So everywhere Newton appears. So like that, you can ask the question, in how many places Ramanujan's name appears? And it so turned out, in the encyclopedia, there are about 27 terms named after him. Okay, Ramanujan series. Ramanujan function, Ramanujan number, various things are there. And this is the 27 terms have been identified. And in several places, he comes along with several other people. 200 further items are there. So it obviously, uh, it has become, nobody looks for citation in those cases. When you talk about Newton's equation, you don't look for citation of that. Citation will go to millions and millions. Like Schrodinger's equation, nobody now cites Erwin Schrodinger in the year. Nobody said, because the Schrodinger's equation has become so common. So like that. To be explicit, if we rank the mathematicians by the number of mathematical items, it looks like Euler, Gauss, Hilbert, Fermat, Riemann, etc. He comes after that, sixth name in that list. So extraordinary contribution by a person <coughs> uh, before the age of 32, OK, died at the age of 32. Till the age of 20, he was suffering in this Chennai and Kumagonam in some way. But he was deeply interested in mathematics. And he will do all the calculations in a slate, graphite, 
the graphite. And when he reached a formula, some identity, he will write it in his notebook because in those days, number of uh, papers were expensive. So the notebook which he had is also very limited, so he will write it there, only the formula. Nobody even knows how he arrived at that formula because after writing the final result, he will simply erase the slate. And that's all, gone. And he knows only the formula. So he actually uh, wrote several papers in the, from 1914 to 1918 or 19, uh, till he was there in Cambridge. Before that, he did a lot of work. But this paper period, he did some 32 important high impact work since five or six years and uh, became so famous that he was even awarded FRS. And he was one of the youngest to get the FRS, fellow of the Royal Society. And there are stories about him in that book, which are there. And, uh, and also, he had a painful life also at some stage. This is what is the reality about it. OK. In 1912, Ramanujan sent letters to several mathematicians. He had derived so many, so many results. He wanted to know how the mathematics people rate him, if they know that these are the works I have done. So he wrote several letters, and uh, many of them simply in that yellow sheet of paper when they received, they put it in the dustbin. In fact, there are some three or four mathematicians who have done that. The only one person who didn't do that was G.H. Hardy, okay? well-known mathematics person from Cambridge. And the story, the way Conigal gives, is also very interesting. And uh, being a big professor, he, Hardy received this letter which introduces, I beg to introduce myself. And then one page about himself, or half a page about it. And the next 10 pages are some equation after equation, identities. This is what that content is. And uh, obviously, such people receive various things of this kind. They are not usually impressed. So they drop it, put it in the dustbin, because they think that must be a cranky guy or something. But Hardy didn't do it. He took the letter. He didn't open it. He went back home. And uh, before going to bed, he has had his chocolate milk or whatever it is, as usual, the British tradition. And then uh, he take, reads various letters he had received on that day. And one was this bundle. And he reads and then puts that again in the dustbin. After seeing, glancing at it, then after going to bed, it comes into him in his dream or whatever sleepy. He felt sleeplessness. Then he said, what is the, there is that equation I have not seen anywhere. What happened? This equation I have not seen. So he went back, took the dustbin thing and removed and started reading it and found extraordinary in some places. He received 120 equations without proof. There are no proofs only equations. Some of them were known to him. He knows already some of them were known to him. Some were immediately he could see there is some mistake in that, one or two of them. And some were not known to him. He doesn't know whether they are correct or wrong. And they look extraordinary. Then he recognized immediately such formulae could not have been written by somebody who is a dull, dumb kind of thing. So he even said, he defeated me completely. I had never seen anything in the least like them before. They must be correct. Because to cook up that an equation itself is very difficult. That is the kind of thing. If you are going to write some equation, cooking up, either it will be uselessly incorrect, so you will know it. But this is the kind of a thing. That's what he stated, as stated in Canigal's uh, book by several people. He invited him to Cambridge, and rest of the developments, there are several stories about it, till he died of TB with a question mark. I'll come to that also. In 1920, that has become a movie now. There is a movie on uh, Ramanujan's this period, from 1914 to 2019. This is the kind of a thing, but this is the status of the 
is research in partition. There is a number pi, all of you might have heard of. And all of us, all the students were taught mostly incorrect things. If you ask any student what is pi, they will say 22 by 7. So if you ask them pi minus 22 by 7, is what is it? They will immediately say it is 0. Now it is not 0, it is an irrational transcendental number. The importance of that only, that has not percolated, many mathematics people know it, but it has not percolated to the students. That is what is there. But it's a great number. Now important thing about that is, it has, it, if you want to put it 3.14, etc., etc., the digits will go on, there is no end to it. If you want, you can work out to 100 digits. If you want, you can work out to 200 digits, million digits, billion digits. It will go on. And it is a great exercise people do to find out various things, etc. But what is the important thing is, can I write it in the, like 22 by 7 or something, which is valid up to three digits, four digits, etc. That's what 22 by 7 is, suppose. So he wrote a formula, 1 by pi is equal to that formula, which is there in this thing. The most interesting thing is that is a series. n is equal to 0, n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, etc. You work first term. You take the first term, n is equal to 0. You put it. And you can easily see it is root 8 by 99 square, or 4n factorial is 1. All those things are 1 except that 1103 divided by 99. That's all that is there. OK? And then there is some 4 to the power 4 are also there. You calculate it. That gives you 8 decimals. First, n is equal to, first term gives you 8 decimals. You go to the second decimal. Second thing, n is equal to 2. If you put it, you get the answer. Uh, you get the n is equal to 1 if you put it. You will find that. Uh, it gives you about uh, 16th decimal place. The next one you go, you go up to 20, 24th decimal place. It's so fast converging. It's a miraculous value for pi, which has been given by him. And it is mysterious, how did he arrive at that? And Hardy called it as a mingled set of arguments, coupled with intuition, which Ramanujan himself could not explain how he got it. He got it. Because he has done various things in his slate, graphite sheet, and then finally has the formula. And you know only the formula. If you ask him to repeat it, it's a bit difficult for him also. That is the way it was. That's a remarkable thing. So this is that famous formula written in some, uh, slay, some place, and uh, very interesting. Now. They have even written papers after that. They have used that formula to calculate that pi for billion digits. Not two, not eight, four, 16, 24, etc. Up to billion digits, they have used it to compute for large by this thing. And that formula is there at the bottom. OK, I'm not bothered about this right at the moment. I'm going to tell something interesting. And this is an interesting thing in the letter to Hardy. He has written two series. Okay, one series is you add all the natural numbers. Okay, one plus two plus three plus four. So what do you expect? If you add all the natural numbers, if you add up to four, you get answer ten. You add up to hundred, you'll get some five thousand fifty. As you increase the number, it will grow. It will become infinity. What you expect is infinity. If you add 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 up to infinity, your answer will be infinity. Right? That's what will happen. If you add up to some 10, it will go up to 100. If you add up to 1,000, it will go to 1,000 square. That's what will happen. But he wrote the final answer as minus 1 by 12. Now, first of all, all the numbers are positive. He gets a negative number. Second, the value is finite value, minus 1 by 12. Now, where did he get this number? What is it? Is it correct or incorrect? That is a question, which is there. And he wrote one more series, which is sigma n cube. Sigma n cube is essentially add, uh, let me try. One, the two cube is eight, three cube is 27, four cube is 64, 
etc. So all the add, all the cubes of all the numbers. Now again it is going to be infinity. But he wrote the final answer when you add all of them is 1 by 120. This is what he has written in the letter to Hardy. Okay? Now these were strange relations were actually if you go on YouTube and put this kind of a thing, sum of natural numbers, etc. There are some YouTube videos are there and YouTube videos have million views. People have seen it. And uh, they are provocative equations to draw attention and needs explanation for the meaning of the word summation. What is meant by sum or equal to? So I have remarked that equal to with an R. It is a special way in which you have to sum over. Okay? It is not simply sum over, but it is that. And this was understood, this is from Ramanujan's handwriting itself. That page is not clear, but 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 is minus 1 by 12. It is uh, not easily visible, but it is better in the computer. Okay, it's because it is magnified, it is in his handwriting itself. And uh, he tries to give an answer why it is so. Okay, I will come to that. And uh, I just displayed it for fun because it is his handwriting. And it is, if there is a great, if there is Newton whose handwriting is available, you will rejoice. That's a kind of thing. So, what happened is, uh, he wrote a second letter to Hardy. Because Hardy responded to that letter. All others did not respond. Whereas Hardy did respond, Dear Sir, I am much gratified on perusing this letter. I was expecting a reply from you similar to the one which a mathematics professor at London said. The professor at mathematics in London told him after seeing this equation, 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to, is equal to minus 1 by 12, you must go to lunatic asylum. Why are you here? That is the way the response was there. But Hardy did not do that. He wanted to know how, how do you get it. He wanted to how do you get it. If I explain this, uh, if I try to explain the thing, that will be very difficult in one letter. So it's privately I should explain how I got it. This is what he has written. But unfortunately there is no proof. In all his thing, there is no proof, because it is the final result which he has got. Now, I'm going to give you the proof, because when I went to uh, the school, town high school, the teacher, the headmaster, principal asked me, why don't you talk to the students? I said, I will talk to the students. Then I had to do an extempore talk. Then I told them, do you know what is the value of this? Then they said, in, many of them knew the thing arithmetic progression, etc., and expected to be infinity. I said it is minus 1 by 12, I'm going to prove it to you. And the proof I have to give you, remember, I have to give the proof in a language which the 12th standard, 10th standard students can understand. I should not use calculus. I should not use anything. So I try to give you a proof. And I'm going to give you that proof now. Okay? The proof, that's why I have called it fake proof. So one, I call that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 up to infinity as S. There is a name I give for that. I multiply by 4S. Okay, I multiply by 4 times. So what do I do? I take 1 and multiply by 4. 2 I multiply by 4, 8. 3 multiply by 12. 4 will become 16, etc. I just put a 0 in between. That's all I do. Okay? Now if I subtract s minus 4s, I will get minus 3s. Okay? Minus 3s is 1 minus 0 is 1, 2 minus 4 is minus 2, 3 minus 0 is 3, 4 minus 8 is minus 4, etc. It's alternating series. 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 minus plus 5, etc. All the odd numbers are positive, all the even numbers are negative. Okay? Very simple. I have not done anything. Uh, so far. So after that, so this is 3s, minus 3s. One, this series is equal to minus 3s. I'm going to multiply the 
both left hand side and right hand side by 4. So the left hand side will give me 12s. Three, minus 3s into 4 will give me minus 12s. So what should I do? I should multiply everything by 4. Instead of writing by multiplying by 4, I'm going to write the same series four times. Okay, I'm going to write the same thing four times. So the first time I write 1 minus 2 plus 3. The second time I write 1 minus 2 plus 3. Third time I write 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4. Fourth time also I write. But only thing is I shift it by one unit. Just slightly shift it like this. Now I add all the four series here. I just simply add 1 and then that comes as 1 here. Now what happens to the second term? Minus 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 0. 3 minus 2 minus 2 plus 1 is 0. Minus 4 plus 3 plus 3 minus 2 is 0. 5 minus 4 minus 4 plus 3 is 0. All of them are 0. So minus 12 less is equal to 1. That's what you get. So that makes it S is equal to minus 1 by 12. I have proven. Now, obviously, I have to do something which is only the class 10 students can understand, which they know only multiplication, addition, subtraction, etc. Now, they were very happy. They also wanted to know what are the mistakes or if it is mistake, incorrect, etc., etc. So, I had to tell them I have done a lot of fraud. Okay? Because, for example, just for the example, I take 0 plus 0 plus 0 up to infinity, right? How many zeros are there? Infinite number of zeros. So that means infinity into 0. So what is the value of E0 into infinity? Nobody knows. It is indeterminate. So I can't say it is 1 plus 0. It is 1 plus some indeterminate quantity. I don't know that. So that can be very large also. So various things I have done, but the, this is the proof I gave. They were very happy to hear that. And, uh, oh, there is a lot of mysterious things happening. When you go to infinite series like that, that's what they understood. I want them to understand whenever you go to that, whatever you do with small things here may not happen with, it's more or less exactly similar to the kind of question Ramanujan himself asked in a class, sixth standard. We were all impressed by that. The class, he, in the class he asked this question when some teacher was saying, if I have four chocolates, if I go to four people, how many each one will get one? Four divided by four is one. Any number, five divided by five is one. So any number divided by that number will give you answer is one. And people were happy. Then Ramanujan got up and said that, what is the answer for zero by zero? If there are no chocolates and I don't give it to anyone, how many each one will get? So this is a kind of a mythical story which was there in the school, even before I read it in Carnegie's book. It was there in that book, sto, sto thing. So that is a kind of a thing he was bothered about mathematics right from the beginning. So that's what I wanted to tell. Okay. Now, so hard... Generalized to cube process. <laughs> that same proof doesn't generalize to cube process. Yeah, 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 it does. It does. <laughs> it does. It does. But I will, I will give you the way. What the, the Hardy is not a fool. Hardy knew what is happening. Because he knows this object, 1 by n power z, 1 by 1 power z, 2 po 1 by 2 power z, 1 by 3 power z, 1 by 4 power z. Now, if you put z is equal to minus 1, okay, then you will get the series which I wrote. Because 1 by 2 power minus 1 is actually 2. You should go to the numerator. That's all that should be done. So this series, when z is equal to minus 1, is called zeta of minus 1. That function is called zeta. And that there is a name for that, which is called Rivan zeta function. And zeta of minus 1 is what he was trying to calculate. He was trying to calculate this series, which is there, is zeta of minus 1. OK? So Hardy understood immediately zeta of minus 1 and zeta of minus 3 is what Ramanujan has written. And, and very interestingly, at that time when Hardy was looking at this function, he was not aware of what is the value for zeta of minus 1. Then he became professor. Immediately he became professor because he is an outstanding mathematician. And he had. And he also suffered from TB, question mark, like Ramanujan. Okay? 
and died at the age of 39. And before the age of 39, he has done extraordinary levels of work, like Ramanujan, much more than that, to some extent. But the important thing is Riemann had education in outstanding mathematical institutions in Germany. And they were Gottingen and Berlin. But Ramanujan studied in Kumbhakonam and Chennai. OK? So his training is far better. And he was very strict about his proof. So Riemann was very rigorous in providing proofs, unlike the style of Ramanujan. Now, the most important thing is he was an expert in complex analysis. And to understand that zeta of minus 1 is minus 1 by 12, you need to understand complex analysis, the singularities of complex functions, all those things. But Riemann, uh, Ramanujan was not aware of any complex. He didn't go through that. He has finished only 12 standard, or sorry, school, 10 standard, SSLC in those days. He even failed in his... Um, college admission, college examinations. So he was not aware of more than uh, these things, but he, how did he come across? How did he get it? That's a very, very mysterious one. OK. Ramanujan did not write down the proofs of the series. Now, but in his second notebook, which is called, there is a story behind it, he had several other series also. There is a book which is called, What Happened is also very interesting. After his death, some 40 years after death, his wife was alive, Janike Mal, and uh, there is this professor from England came to meet her and uh, found out that people say he's a great mathematics person, you people praise him. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. Then he asked her, do you remember anything what she said, etc.? No, I don't remember much of the things, etc. But he has given me a box, okay, trunk box, which is there in the top. I will bring it to you. I can see it. 1960s in Chennai, okay. She was living in Chennai. She brought the book, and there were a lot of notes. Then Bernd actually did was classify the notes and found out there are thousands of formulas which were written down like that. Then he classified all of them and made into six books, which is called Ramanujan's Last Notebooks. Okay, Six notebooks of Ramanujan were made into six books, and they are available now in the market as a regular thing published by TIFR, Tata Institute. And there were several. And in the second notebook, he had written down several other series. Now. What is it our aim, what is, what is my aim was, or at least thing is, what is the way in which Ramanujan could have arrived at that number? Okay? And why is it important? Why is it important? I will point out. So Ramanujan was aware of this thing, this 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 is written there. It is there in that letter also. And people knew that series is equal to 1 by 4, but Euler himself has worked out for some mechanic method. And we saw it is minus 3s. So they're getting minus 1 by 12 from there. Is, no, if you know that this is equal to 1 by 4. Now, this series is called Dirichlet function. There is a name for it, exactly like previous one. And if you put z equal to minus 1, you will get this thing. You will get this thing. So there is nothing more, simple. Same simple school level mathematics, nothing more. And there is a relation between this series and the previous one, which I wrote here, this one, which is this relation. And again, it is not very difficult to work out the relation, which is true. The value is true wherever, whatever is the value of z. Okay? So if you know eta of z to be equal to 1 by 4, you can get the value of this to be 1 by 12, minus 1 by 12, by simply put z is equal to minus 1. That's all. Simple substitution of the value will give you the answer. Okay, this is what is it. But only thing is, was he using this equation? Nobody knows. So what he was thing is that you define this thing, 1 plus z plus z square, which is a nice series, which is a nice, you can, as long as there is a small number, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc., 
the value which you have will converge. No problem. You will find a finite value. But only thing is when z is equal to 1, this series diverges. When z is equal to minus 1, doesn't diverge. But it will what are called divergent series. Okay? It is known in simple mathematics. So what was done is a simple one paragraph of mathematics, which I have written down, that if you know this function in one place, you can find out the value of the function in another point by what is called analytic continuation. That is what, uh, that's what Hardy understood, and he seems to have used without knowing any of this. OK. Now, again, the proof is very simple. If you know this series, you just work it out 1 by 1 minus z. z is equal to minus 1 will make it as 1 by 2. 1 by 2 whole square is 1 by 4. And that's what is used by all these people. There is nothing mysterious about it. Because it is singular at z is equal to 1. When you put z is equal to 1, 1 by 0 is infinity. But you put z is equal to minus 1, it is not infinity. It is 1 by 4. That's all, as simple as that. So that is what is used. So if I want to do such kind of divergent series, what is called divergent series means if you sum it up, it will go a big blob, infinity. How do I sum it up? There is what he seems to have adopted is this trick, what we call in physics as regularization and renormalization. Okay, these are the two terms. I'm going to explain. Whatever you do, you should deal with only finite quantities. Okay, that's basically the idea. So what I do is, I don't take n, but I multiply that function by f of n by n. I'll tell you what is that function. But I want to make sure, for example, I can easily do the summation up to 10, no problem. I can do the summation up to 100, no problem. Yeah, even I can do up to million, no problem. We can do that. So wherever that number is finite, we can easily do it. When it becomes infinity, it becomes a problem. So what I do is I multiply this function by this number, f of x. That function is such that if n goes to infinity, you, f becomes 1. If n goes to infinity, this becomes f of this thing is 0 is 1. So what you are doing is sigma n. That's what you are doing. But when n is not infinity, okay, when it is not infinity but very large, I can find out. So the question is, can I find what is this series by looking at summation over this thing by a suitable choice? And the answer is very simple. If you do that, you will get an answer which is minus 1 by 12. And when n goes to infinity, you should get infinity. And that is what that n order n square which I have written down. It will go like that. We know that that's what is going to happen. So the finite quantity is minus 1 by 12. And there is an infinite quantity which is order n square. So drop that infinity and take only the finite quantity. So the dropping means what does it mean? That is the question which was, which is physically motivating but mathematically, that analytic continuation is the only answer. Okay, that is what is the problem. Okay, I'll tell. So this is what uh, Riman, uh, Ramanujan seems to have done from his famous last notebooks to the last notebooks number two. Okay, was there, and it is explained in this book, and he seems to have worked out. How, why he is subtracting an infinite term by comparing with another series. He compares with another series and removes that infinity and gets only the finite quantity. That is what he has done, and that is what this whole procedure is explained. This gives the result, Ramanujan removed the divergence in a systematic way, resulting in the finite value. That is the net result. So he wants to get the finite value, uh, even though it is infinity, by subtracting some infinite quantity. Okay, that is what is done. Okay, so now this is an explanation of what is being done. The name for that is what was what Hardy did. 
is called zeta function regularization, the way he approached it. There are other ways in which it can be done, and I'm going to explain. So there is a formula which is called Euler-Maclaurin formula, which is much more general now. Using this, we can easily get what is the infinite part and what is the finite part. All those things can be obtained now. No problem. We can completely understand that using that. Now I'm going to talk about what is the relation to quantum physics, which I love and I use and everywhere, etc. So this, we turn to quantum field theory. Don't bother about too much of this quantum field theory. I'm going to give simple minimum, which is required for my purpose. The thing is, divergences occurs in the study of string theory in 26 dimensions. It's only a statement. So take my word for it. String theory in um, physics, quantum physics, is very popular now. Okay? Big mathematics, physics people are involved in this. And it, it is supposed to be the theory of everything. The whole universe, it's like uh, Advaita. The whole thing is there, supposedly, and it is not working. So this is the current status of the theory. And this number minus 1 by 12 for that series appears there in 26 dimensional bosonic string theory as a name called. But if I talk about bosonic string theory, there is no point in explaining in this room. So I have to use something much simpler. OK? Much simpler. So I will focus on a very simple example, which also experimental justification, unlike string theory. So this is actually to provoke my string theory friends in other places to make fun of them, because they talk about physics which is not experimentally verifiable, as of now. And there is no scope for verifying it in the near future either. People predict using for physics something which can be verified in the next five years, 10 years by experimentation. But it looks like string theory cannot be verified the next generation. OK? Maybe, may not be. So that's why I didn't want to. So this is, now I'm going to explain the same thing appears in another simple quantum mechanical problem. And the problem is very, very simple. It was done in 1948 by a Dutch physics person, Casimir. What he did was argued, if I have two plates, okay, two plates are there, I know nothing, and isolated from thing, there is only electromagnetic light or radiation between them. Electromagnetic light, bet radiation between them. And the two plates are there, they are neutral. There are no charges there. He works out the energy of keeping those two plates and the force between two plates. If we do classically, there is no force. They are all, there is nothing to attract, except gravitational force, because this is massive, this is massive. But gravitational force is very tiny, so you can ignore it for the moment. But if you do quantum theory, there seem to be a force between the two plates, they attract. Can you measure the force? Answer is yes, and Casimir gave a theory for that evaluated it and found the force. This is what. But when he gave the theory for that, the same sigma n appears, and the same minus 1 by 12 is what was used by him, and the same thing gives you a force, which means he experimentally verifies. He verifies that series by an experiment. That's what it means. Okay. So the procedure is simple regularize the theory by doing it at a finite value, remove the infinity by this thing, and take the finite value, and that will give you the answer. That is what is the procedure which was adopted by him. So I'm going to explain this thing. Don't bother about all these equations which I have written down. What is there is there are two plates. You just think that there is a string between them, and the string can vibrate, keeping Nothing happens at the boundaries. That is what, in mathematics, they will call it as Dirichlet boundary condition. Nothing happens. They are held. Supposing I have a string here, and I give one other end of the string, then it can be string, or it can be a sine function. It can be a cos sine 1 pi, sine 2 pi, sine various modes of vibration, which is there in all the places. 
So what is it you have to do is only find out all possible modes, which is sine n pi x by L. There is a printing mistake here, sine n pi x by L, and uh, compute the energy. And that energy will turn out to be sigma n. Forget all this L and the factors of pi by L. There is a sigma n, which is appearing, which is nothing but 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 pi. And you know the answer. It should be infinity. So what you expect, energy is expected to be infinity, but it is not infinity. You have to subtract the infinite term and get a finite value. That is what is the thing. The procedure for that is don't take sigma n. You take the sigma n e power minus n ln. When n goes to infinity, this is becoming 0. So e power 0 is 1. So sigma n will be coming back. So this is what that object, when n tends to infinity, this whole thing is uh, 1. So you get sigma n. So I have worked out. I have not done anything more. I have simply worked out for an arbitrary n, capital N, I worked out this series. Okay? Then it goes like n square, which is what expected, minus 1 by 12. And this goes like 1 over n. When n tends to infinity, that n square term comes up, minus 1 by 12 comes up, the rest of them will be 0. So this is minus 1 by 12. And the same thing is, if you work it out, it is nothing but in mathematics what they call the Bernoulli numbers, which appear here, okay? which is independent of simple exercise which is there. So this is the result. And uh, Ramanujan summation, which I put you should not sum blindly. You should do with summation in this regularized, renormalized fashion. That is additional terms which are required. That's why that Ramanujan summation, capital R on top of the sum equal to, should be maintained. First, regularize the sum to finite limit. Second, subtract the infinite volume limit and get the finite value here. Okay, That is what is done here. So this is basically the idea of renormalization. And that's what Ramanujan was doing. Ramanujan was essentially doing regularization and renormalization of what physics people have been doing after 1948, where the QED, quantum electrodynamics, was constructed. What happens in quantum electrodynamics is you get infinity. When you compute it, you get infinity. Exactly like this, you get infinity. So what they do is, oh, electronic, what is the charge of electron? What is the mass of electron? They say it is infinity. What is the bare mass of electron with no other thing? If it is in some universe, it is infinity. They subtract that part. After that, what you get is a finite quantity. Now, is the finite quantity which you get, is it experimentally measured? OK, that is the question. Answer seems to be. There are several things which you can work out, like what is the magnetic moment of the electron? Okay? What is the magnetic moment of the electron? If you work it out, you will find exactly with all the corrections. And people have worked out, after removing that infinity, they get a finite number, which is some 2 point uh, g minus 2. What they say is 2.123, some values. Up to some eight digits, they have worked it out. And when they do the experiment, that's what is coming out. The experiment gives you the answer which you get calculated by this up to eight decimal places. So that's what nature seems to prefer. And that's what physics people are claiming that is a regularization and renormalization. OK? So this is what was done. And uh, what about measuring the Casimir energy? I did the calculation for Casimir energy in one dimension, that there is a plate here, there is a plate here, etc. But I should do it in three dimensions. We are living in a three-dimensional world. So I put one plate here, one plate here, and find out the pressure on the two plates. The pressure is such that they come closer. Okay? Can I measure it experimentally is the question. So it is a force between uh, the two plates which gives you the answer. So the answer was worked out. Again, 
uh, because you are doing in three dimensions, instead of sigma n, what you get is sigma n cube. That's what you get. That's why I have replaced it by zeta of minus 3. And this is the pressure which you can compute because this number is actually a divergent if you write it as a series. But it's a finite nice number, nice number, which is some 1 by 30 or something like that, which is used here to get this thing. Sigma n cube appears, and this is the pressure. Now, can you measure this pressure? Answer is yes, we can measure the pressure. If you have asked whether I can measure the pressure 100 years back, no, we don't have the machinery to measure that kind of pressure. But now we have nice laser interferometry because 100 years back there was no laser. You should remember this object which is there, this laser which I am po pointing here, it was not there even 50 years back. It came in 1960s, okay? That you can send light like this came after 1960s. That is the time laser came. It is a light amplification which is happening in a particular fashion. So this is a quantum effect. What you're doing is quantum mechanics. This is quantum theory. Without understanding quantum theory, I can't understand how it is going in that kind of a line. Okay? So that is the beauty of this thing. And the force value is very, very tiny. That force between two plates is so tiny, which is what people call it 10 to the power minus 8 newtons. There is a measure for that. It is very tiny. But can you measure it? Can you measure it is a question. Answer is we can measure it now using later laser interferometry. So this is basically the idea. To conclude, the first experiment successfully measured the Casimir energy it was done in 2002. The torsion pendulum and laser into torsion pendulum is there in your lab here. In the physics lab, people use it for various things. But laser interferometry is also there. Probably they can measure Casimir energy here in the lab itself if they want. I don't know. I have to check that. There are conjectures that renormalized vacuum energy thing can be. What happens is the following. The universe is there. Universe is expanding. There is a vacuum that expanding because somebody seems to be pulling it from infinity. That is supposed to be some dark energy, people call it. Can I explain it using that? Answer seems to be no. It is not correct. But this is the kind of a thing that if you do quantum theory of two plates with radiation in between, there is a force even when there, there are no charges. Even when there are no charges. There is no electric charges, no magnetic field, nothing. It's only the two things are there. They seem to be attracting each other. So this is the mysterious Casimir energy. And uh, people seem to have measured it. OK, what is the lesson? Lesson is what we when go back to Ramanujan. Ramanujan asked this question, we have to understand infinity, and we have to understand 0. Both, because infinity is 1 by 0, Okay, any number by 0. So we don't know what it was, and even now we don't have meaning very carefully. That should be measured in real life, in real context-dependent cases. And I want to quote a statement by Rima outside. Actually, I wanted to title this talk uh, instead of RRR as RRRR, four R's. Unfortunately, Raja Mowli has made only movie with three hours. So I had to satisfy. Secondly, also, it was Ramanujan's death anniversary. <laughs> yeah. So Rima, no, Riman, Ramanujan, regularization, and renormalization. That is what is the thing. So I have stopped with that point here. Now, Riman gave a talk in 1855 about non-Euclidean spaces, which is called habilitation talk. How do you I describe a space which is not Euclidean? When I say Euclidean, it essentially means parallel lines meet, parallel lines meet. What is the sum of angles of a triangle? It is not 180 degrees. All those funny phenomena will start happening. So he was explaining how it should be done in 1855, which is called habilitation talk, 
after the talk goss gave him the position of professor he became professor after that okay that is the work which was done by him and very interestingly he in that talk if you have read the paper i have read the paper amazing paper extraordinary work and he says that axioms which people have given euler or oh, sorry euclid earlier later he himself was given for non euclidean thing are they true when you go to infinitesimal levels okay he asked that question very very small distances are they true what when you go to large distances he himself says no it may not be true we have to revise our axioms of geometry what is meant by geometry okay he says very clearly and uh, this is related to again infinity and zero it is again related when you say infinitesimal distance distance between two points is zero when you say infinite distance infinity we have to understand it we don't know and we may have to revise our axioms of geometry we have some ways of that revision will involve he himself says riman himself says the knowledge of physics knowledge of physics is what he didn't was not aware of quantum physics knowledge of physics will be needed is what riman himself was telling and that is what is there so i use the materials which i have used or my friend beaten holes he is in mexico he wrote this paper and read it to sent it to me and i corrected it and there were slight mistakes minor mistakes i corrected and he was happy and uh, ramanujan second notebook unpublished that is also something which i had to look at and this is a remarkable thing so i'm going to stop it here and that is the end so to understand infinity and zero and to understand that series 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 up to infinity and 1 cube plus 2 cube plus 3 cube up to infinity this is the basis on which understanding requires regularization and renormalization and that is the basis on which our quantum physics has developed to some level okay reasonable level where nature seems to have obeyed that procedure of regularization and renormalization nature seems to have obeyed and experimentally we verify it and we cannot ignore it now i'll stop here thank you very much